Hello everyone, and welcome to a slightly different video today. I've decided to let an AI-powered voice take the lead as I work on building an enclosure for the Black Rhino. I usually create content in a different way, so this is a bit of an experiment. I'm really excited to try something new and bring you along for the journey. If you notice any improvements I can make or if you prefer just watching the speed build and listening to music, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback means the world to me and will help me decide whether to continue with AI-generated voiceovers or stick to my usual methods. Plus, with this spoken text, I got help from AI because I don't speak or make sentences very well. I do understand English well, but when it comes to speaking, I am terrible. So, without further ado, let's dive into this exciting episode. I'm currently in the process of creating what resembles a wading pool. Initially, my plan was to construct a sizable pool, but upon realizing that it was excessively deep, I decided to reduce the water level, making it more of a shallow basin. However, when I introduced the rhino to the enclosure, it became apparent that they aren't swimmers. As a solution, I devised a creative backstory for the enclosure, suggesting that it previously housed elephants who used the deep pool. In the later part of the video, you'll notice that I've added decals to the walls to make the pool look like it's in poor condition, drained, and under reconstruction. Now, as you can see, I'm trying to add water to the pool to look good. However, as I mentioned earlier, rhinos are not particularly adept swimmers. All rhinos enjoy wallowing in mud to keep cool during hot days, but only Asian rhinos can swim. They use this skill to cross rivers, while their African counterparts avoid rivers due to the danger of drowning. I've tried placed here a southern white rhino, which isn't a proficient swimmer, alongside an Indian rhino, known for its swimming prowess, within the enclosure. The outcome was as you might expect, the Indian rhino had no trouble entering the water. Since I'm building a desert zoo with animals exclusively from the arid animal pack, I had to come up with a different approach to designing the pool. This enclosure turned out to be quite time-consuming due to the inclusion of several distinct viewing areas for the guests. For instance, there's the previous section with the pool, and now, this particular section with this ditch. In case you're curious about the duration of this project, the filming process itself took around 6 hours. Additionally, I'm guessing another 2 to 3 hours spent off-camera on various tasks like finalizing the surroundings, applying decals, adding details, and working on the backstage area. This particular piece of stone wall is from the Steam Workshop. It's called Grey Stone Path by Cyber Foxy. I really like how this piece of fence turned out. I don't often undertake such intricate constructions, but in this case, I felt particularly creative, and I thoroughly enjoyed working with the stone wall. This is probably what everyone does with this piece of enrichment, immersing it in the ground, and I think it's absolutely brilliant. And in my opinion, it blends best with the desert biome's soil.
For a touch of realism, I've added a water jet feature to the mud bath. This simple addition brings a more authentic feel to the enclosure that there is a mud. I make an effort to create realistic enclosures and consider their design carefully. However, there are instances where I overlook certain elements or fail to anticipate certain factors, as was the case with the water in the rhino pool. Honestly, I often draw inspiration from fellow creators, observing their work and then working to replicate or adapt their ideas to suit my own preferences. And this is the advice I would offer to anyone who struggles with building in Planet Zoo, watch tutorials, observe speed builds, download items from the workshop and study what they are made of. Take it step by step, recreating elements that catch your eye, like a wall, a fence, or even a simple piece of natural scenery. As you progress, you'll gradually develop the skills to craft intricate and impressive structures and enclosures. Currently, I am constructing a metal gate that I've tried to model after a real photo I found on ZooChat.com from a backstage area at a rhino enclosure. I have taken great care to ensure that the gate appears functional, paying special attention to details like the hinges and the lock. And I'm proud of how it turned out. Feel free to leave your feedback in the comments about whether you'd be interested in me uploading this fence, gate, and its various versions that I created in a later part of the video, to the Steam Workshop. Once again, I'm in the process of designing a slightly varied piece of wall, while maintaining the cohesive style of the zoo. The same approach applies to the foliage. I aim for a unified look throughout the zoo due to its desert biome setting, while also ensuring that each enclosure has its unique features. When constructing a building, I almost always find it helpful to start with a single grid piece that I duplicate along with all the wall components. This allows me to arrange them in any desired configuration with ease. Exceptionally, I placed the grid piece here last, as I somehow forgot to include it initially.
I'm continuing with the concept that the habitat is a bit older. Therefore, I'm constructing this gate using wooden pieces that resemble worn materials, similar to the gazebo pieces. I'm not entirely sure if they're referred to as the gazebo pieces in English, but these elements are from an African pack. And here we come to the stage of building the roof. I've heard a lot of people mention that they often struggle with this step, and I'm no exception. Although I don't show it in the video, I went through several versions before managing to create one that I was happy with. The other structures in the zoo have a more eco-friendly design, with some featuring green roofs to aid in cooling. However, given that this building is older, it has a metal roof. Although it doesn't appear very old now that I realize it, I will add some patches later to convey that. I could have taken it a step further and add dirt and grime to enhance its authenticity, or even employed roof sections with rusty metal. But that doesn't matter now anyway, it still looks pretty good. Currently, I'm incorporating details such as wooden beams and lights. Dealing with lights can be a bit challenging in Planet Zoo. Some lights are aesthetically pleasing and blend well with the environment, but they lack a sufficient light range. It would be beneficial if there were a way to modify this aspect.
Now, we're progressing towards finishing the outdoor enclosure. I skipped the backstage area in this speed build as it tends to remain consistent. But don't worry, you'll get to see it in the cinematic shots in the end. Black rhinos mainly feed on browse, leaves from shrubs, bushes, and trees, and have tough, prehensile lips that are adapted to this kind of foraging. So for this reason I am adding these tree trunks so they don't eat the bushes and trees I put here. To enhance the habitat, I'm introducing a prominent feature, a sizable planter, to fill the empty space. The trees in them are tall enough to be out of reach for the rhinos. However, some bushes are growing between the stones, providing the rhinos access to them. This setup includes dry, partially consumed branches protruding from the bushes. These are the details that matter when you are trying to build realistic, in my opinion. As we approach the conclusion, the final steps involve incorporating enrichment items, placing stones, and adding the finishing touch with grass. And there we have it, the completion of the Black Rhino enclosure. I hope you've enjoyed following along as I brought this habitat to life. Don't forget to stay tuned for the cinematic shots that showcase the enclosure's intricate details and design. Thank you for joining me on this journey, and I look forward to sharing more exciting projects with you in the future. Until next time, take care, and happy building!